Sal Favard is one of the most historically important opera houses in Paris. It hosts Le Théâtre National de l'Opera Comique. Contrary to the implications of its name, Le Théâtre National de l'Opera Comique was not an opera house that only performed Les Opres Comiques during La Belle Époque. Some of the most important performances were not operas that would be categorized as Les Opres Comiques. These operas, Les Opres Comiques, are not necessarily comic operas. They are a genre of operas that contain and emphasize spoken dialogue and arias. Perhaps the most important opera comique, Georges Bizet's Gamin, was performed for the first time at Salle Favard. Salle Favard also was the location of important performances for works like Jules Massé's Manon and in 1902, Claude Debussy's Pelea et Melisandre, which both are notably not traditional opera comique. The opening of Pelea and Melisandre produced some of the most contentious and controversial moments in opera history. It is Debussy's only opera, and much like De Beethoven's Video, its importance is derived from the fact that it is our only chance to see a Debussy opera. It tells the story of Melisandre, a woman who is mysteriously found in the forest by Prince Gouland of El Monde. They marry, but soon after, Melisandre falls in love with Gouland's half-brother, Peleas. Drama soon ensues. At the open dress rehearsal, the opera was met with laughter and hostility. At the opening performance, characters were met with shouts of Petit Quignol, or Little Clown. Yet, a large majority of the audience, who were mostly Debussyists, clapped and cheered excessively. During intermissions, arguments broke out between the traditional opera, opera frequenters were for the most part anti dbc and the Debussyists, who for the most part were professional musicians who knew and loved dbc for his orchestral music the drama surrounding the opera extended to the media every major newspaper contained a review of pelea and melisandre and critics like the audience were noticeably split though dbc's music was very innovative the content of the opera alone could not feel the controversy that surrounded Pelea and Melisandre. Rather, it was a reflection of the division between old and new thought, conservative and liberal forces, the wealthy and the less fortunate in Paris. For example, there is a strong correlation between newspapers' stand on the Dreyfus affair and their stance on Pelea. Melisandre. Newspapers that were pro Dreyfus for the most part raved about Pelea and Melisandre. Those that were anti Dreyfus vehemently disparaged the opera. Further, support for the opera was rigidly divided across seating lines. Those that had superior and more expensive seats tended to be against Pelea and Melisandre, and those with cheaper seats championed it. While this event was important in of itself, what makes it have great historical relevance is how it so neatly illustrates the state of class relations in Paris at the time. We must note that the group of people not included in the pro Debussy musicians and the anti Debussy bourgeoisie is the lower classes. While La Belle Époque was an extraordinarily important time in terms of changes made to French culture, there was a large segment of the population that is simply not able to experience these innovations. 
When examining the next five locations, we must never forget how exclusive most of these places were. The music here is from the first act of Pelea and Melisandre. Oh, <laughs> 